What is something that you learned about each other from the amazing race um, that would surprise viewers? Oh, that would surprise oh, viewers. Surprise viewers. That's an interesting take on that mm-hmm. question. Um, I mean, I guess like everyone thought like, my gosh, two strangers basically coming together, like this could be very disastrous and not successful, but we really did click almost immediately. Like our identicalness is like very identical. Um, it, I, I knew like how to nurture her, like when she was struggling in the car in Bologna, like I was thinking like, Oh God, if this was me, I would not want someone trying to like direct me or tell me, or, you know, you, you know, I don't know, fix the problem. I just sat back and I said, you know, I'm here for you, whatever you need and just let her cry it out. Um, so it was, it was interesting to see like the techniques that I, how I would want to be treated is actually how she also <laughs> wanted to be treated. Um, but um, is there anything like fun? I, I learned, oh, I wish this was aired. I learned that my sister is a little bit of a prankster. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> she gave me a good scare during the first leg. <laughs> So we were struggling getting to the Saul challenge and um, she had been dropping everything all morning. I mean, the fanny pack, the money, the clue, the keys. I mean, like everything was just spilled all over all morning in Germany. So we're driving to Saul. We're getting lost. It's a little bit, you know, the tensions there. (laughs) It's definitely high. And Molly says from the back seat. Oh my God, I lost the money. <laughs> and we needed money to park the car. <laughs> and here we are, totally stressed out. I promised my daughter we would not get out on the first leg. <laughs> and I'm just like, immediately, like, we're done. We're, we're toast. Um, she even had the camera guy and the sound guy in the car fooled. Like, they were both like, what? <laughs> Um, just I just kidding. needed to bring some levity to the moment. Oh, it was we so were like, perfect. Oof. It was so perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, my sister, the prankster. <laughs> That's a good one. You um, guys talked about enjoying the time away from the cameras, talking, but was there anything else you guys got to do spending time together that was like your favorite thing? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I, I Well, you go. I was going to was going to share that. We both found a love for a French, um, a French uh, television show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a singing competition, actually oh. a rapping competition. Yeah. <laughs> so whenever we got to a country and we were able to find that show on TV, uh, we were just so excited. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. I did. I I actually, even though we sucked at it, <laughs> I enjoyed grilling the fish with you. Oh. <laughs> She does not like fish. and I don't know how to grill. It was like a challenge that was actually probably more difficult for us yeah. than it really should have been. Um, so it was kind of fun, but especially to watch back, like us figuring out how to like get through that one. Oh, it's fun. Yeah. And it was just a cool beach to be at, like a really cool yeah. little local thing to do. Yeah. Um, so a team that you guys were close with were the brothers, Michael and Marcus. Um, Emily, are you surprised that Marcus told me that he was trying to encourage Michael to talk to you since you guys were both single at the time? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm not surprised because this one was also trying to do that. <laughs> they were like in cahoots together. <laughs> Michael, I adore you. I love him. He's sweet. Um, but he's a little bit young for it. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been fun. <laughs> it would have been. <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> I had to I had to throw it in there. <laughs> so I was so <laughs> Worked with the brothers quite a while with navigation. What went through your mind when they were eliminated? Oh, uh, we were so oh, sad to see them go. We 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 wanted to be in the final three with them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, I mean, they were really such a strong team. So to see Marcus sort of just kind of fall apart. I mean, watching that back too, knowing he only had that back panel wrong and he kept putting everything in the same way. I yeah. mean, you just hope that 
a moment like that doesn't happen for your team. And it was really unfortunate that set them back like 45 minutes. Yeah. I think also being at that roadblock together in Malaga at that point, we knew it was going to be between the two of us and that just hurt our heart. It really so did. Much. <laughs> yeah, it did. They, yeah. we had a, like, a, a special bond with them um, just because of the nature of their relationship was that they don't see each other that often. They're siblings. Um, so they were also, you know, sort of having very similar discovery experiences us on the race. Yeah. And I would have loved to see them take it all the way um, to the finale. Not, not win it. We would have won it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been a, a fun match to watch. So in Jordan, Phil told you and Michael and Marcus that there is no reason at all that either of you can't win the million dollar prize. First of all, what prompted that? <laughs> and then how did it feel um, hearing him have so much faith in you guys? It kind of felt like a father being like, <laughs> you better bring the prize home. There's no reason why. You <laughs> I was like, this is a different side of Phil right now. <laughs> yeah. Phil is so wonderful. He's amazing. Oh my gosh. He Love was, that man. He was talking to us about manifesting and how we could really take it home. It just takes one leg. But yeah, in that moment, when we both finished um, at the, back, at the back, back of the pack, we were just so disappointed in ourselves. Wow. And I knew, I mean, and he could probably see it in our faces. Yeah. Like, this is not comfortable. This is not where we're supposed to be. Um, so I think he just realized like he needed need to give us talk. some encouragement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. That makes sense. Um, you guys did have some impressive wins. Uh, you won the Expedia award points for Australia. Um, when you guys were in Italy, you said it'll be your birthday trip. Uh, when is that? And are you sticking to that plan? <laughs> not gonna happen unfortunately for a birthday our, our birthday is march 29th and we still haven't figured out how we claim this prize so. <laughs> <laughs> um but um we will definitely plan the trip hopefully for 2022 or 2023 okay. um yeah we'll have to do something different for our birthday <laughs> I was gonna ask because I know weird things happen with adoption if you celebrated your birthday on the same day but they got the the day right so yeah That's good information to know um yeah you said at the beginning that you guys didn't have twin telepathy because you didn't grow up together um but you found out you had a lot of weird similarities growing up do you think you developed any telepathy after getting to know each other for a bit um I don't know about developed telepathy I don't know <laughs> I mean, we, I, we definitely learn more about each other, yeah. I think, and probably had a better inkling of like what the other was thinking um, in those specific moments of decision making. Um, but, you know, like watching like Lulu and Lala, I, I feel like they are like real twins yeah. and we, we have quite a, a long way to go to <laughs> yeah. be on that level of, of twinship. Um, but yeah, definitely learn more, yeah. you know, and I, I think physically, um, our telepathy manifests like through how we sit and speak and, um, uh, I don't know, just react in certain situations, respond, reply. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. But I, I don't know if I could communicate just I looking at your our eyes. Our communication is a little lacking. We're, <laughs> we're going to work on that for the all-star season. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Um, Emily, were you able to figure out how you injured your quad muscle in Italy? Uh, so I think what happened, this is, and this is just a guess, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not an athlete, so I don't know much about sports medicine, but I think what happened was we did a lot of running in Italy. I think they said it was like nine like, miles yeah, a day. Something crazy. Um, so I think I was, you know, worn out. I, I know for sure I wasn't hydrating enough. Um, and then we got to Jordan and, uh, that was when it was the start of the leg in the Wadi Rum desert that I actually, um, tore my muscle. I, I speculate that because the, the train steps that we had to come down off of were very high off the ground in the sand. So when, and also when you step down your foot, you know, sank. 
So I feel like it was like you almost overstretched probably when you yeah. stepped off the train because she wasn't complaining about anything until we started running in the sand. And she was like, oh my God, I just did something to my leg. I, it was, yeah. It was, and it felt like a snap. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it was probably a combination of just, you know, worn out muscle, probably didn't stretch enough, probably wasn't hydrated enough. Um, all lessons to learn. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So the the torn muscle in my quad is what caused me to overcompensate on my left leg. And, uh, you know, I was just trying to nurse that muscle and it was too much for my left knee. And so I ended up coming home with two, uh, plateau fractures in my tibias, Wow. (laughs) One in each leg. (laughs) Wow. So, so what's the recommended, um, like recovery for that? You just, I had eight weeks of taking it easy and letting my bones heal. Uh, and then I started physical therapy. So I was supposed to actually start my running regimen, uh, just recently, but I haven't done it yet. I'm a little bit, (laughs) bit nervous. Um, but you know, I'll continue the physical therapy and I'll start to work up my running again and, and just get back out there. Yeah. Well, you were very impressive. Every time you, you were mentioning that leg, I was like, Oh my God, is this the episode it's going to give out? And you guys made it all the way to the finale. So what, yeah. What was going through your mind doing that last last race and was there any point where you're like okay I think I got it even though you were kind of trailing Derek and Claire for a bit yeah so we when we started the race and like got out of the bottling first like we were like yes we can win this and then we started to let little mistakes slip in and so you know we are are the confidence we had going into it was starting to chip away Um, but we knew that there was going to be that memory challenge at the end and we could overcome there. We've overcome at other challenges before. So we never really gave up hope. Even when Derek and Claire left before us, um, we finished pretty soon after them. And once we ripped the clue and saw that it was like, figure out where this bill or what the building is and then figure out where the building is and get there. We had a hope that, you know, maybe they could slip up and we just power through and run. And that's why I was yelling at her. I'm like, run faster. <laughs> like, go, oh, this is the last leg. We don't need you anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was just like, let's do it. We can still make it. <laughs> we don't need me anymore. For the leg. We don't need the leg anymore. <laughs> So the running through Broadway for everyone looked so hectic, like with Claire supposedly not being a good runner and Derek being like, it's a million (laughs) dollars. That's basically the energy that is. We don't need that leg anymore. It's a million (laughs) dollars. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Like we said, we just will buy myself some new legs. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Emily you talked a lot about you wanted to show your perseverance um, because of your kids. I don't know how old your kids are, but did they watch it at all? And what did they have to say about, yeah, you sticking with it? So I have one 13 year old daughter and um, I, one thing that I struggled with, and I think Molly too, just growing up until recently was self-confidence and, I learned that perseverance, you know, having perseverance and sticking things out and seeing what you can accomplish can really help to build that confidence up. And it's something that I want for her. I want her to learn it at a young age. Um, You know, now granted, maybe it was a little bit stupid that I was running with these injuries. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I don't want her to do that. (laughs) Um, But yeah, you know, I just, I wanted to that a good example? I mean, a lot of what our children learn is from how we act and behave. And, um, you know, I think that's important. So yeah. What does she say about it? I think she's been a little bit embarrassed. She's 13. Right. <laughs> so, um, but I think over the last few legs, just seeing us pull through and get through to the final and finish in second, I'm pretty sure she's proud. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say so. Tough crowd being on reality TV stuff. <laughs> is this the same? Okay, so is this the same kid that did the DNA test that led to you guys finding each other? Yes. yes. 
Amazing. <laughs> Izzy is our Amazing. little angel here. Yep. She, Amazing. She, so, we just um, spoke at an adoption day for one of our local counties and uh, one of the senators gifted her a Commonwealth flag as a thank you um, for bringing Molly and I together. And I think, I don't know if she realizes how important, you know, how much impact she made on our lives. And I think receiving that flag probably maybe hopefully solidified that a little bit for her. Um, but yeah, she is, she is the culprit. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, I, okay, I have some weird questions <laughs> just because um, our readers do love to know a little bit more of how the race works. Um, were there any rules that took you guys by surprise? Any rules? Um, I think we knew the rules pretty well going into the race. Um, oh, maybe the driving like this, they're very strict on speed limits and driving safety. Okay. Like, cause you see in a lot of, of, I think in the older seasons, like, you know, telling your taxi cab driver to go, go, go fast, fast, fast. Um, but when we, even when we had the drivers in Jordan, we were not able to tell them, you know, you need to go as fast past these other people. Um, and they, you know, no more than five miles or five kilometers over the speed limit in any scenario, so there was really not a whole lot of opportunity to use, you know, speed to, to gain um, a, a lead. Mm-hmm. Um, you just had to hope people got lost like us. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other rules. Yeah. The rules are all pretty straightforward and expected, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think one of the rules that was a little surprising was the passing. Like if you're doing the tightrope thing and you take more longer than four minutes, then someone behind you can then go. Um, I think Claire said she was like very conscious of that. Um, Mm -hmm. And it seemed like that kind of rule might've been in um, Michelle's mind because she was waiting for one of you guys to go down. And she's like, Oh, I could have gone down this whole time. Yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. I don't know. There were some when there that came up another time. It's like we weren't allowed to do something. Uh, the scuba dive or the um circling. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, like we had to wait for David and Aubrey to go, even though we were ready. And there were two like sets of launch stairs. Like I don't know why we couldn't go together. So, yeah. yeah, I guess that was. I don't know if that's like a race was, rule though. Yeah. It's just like a that was yeah that was weird. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, we know that the turnaround for filming is so fast. Um, people from past seasons talked about not even being able to shower and even using like sharing deodorant because there was no time for grooming. Was there anything like that this season? I think with COVID protocols in place, we were um, granted more time for hygiene. <laughs> um, so yeah, never really... Yeah, had that issue, but Thank we were pre- we were prepared for whatever type of race we were going to run. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I was prepared to wear dirty, smelly clothes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, and yeah, it has changed a lot over the years. Um, some of those changes, I think, some fans have noticed, does make it easier for the race. Sirs, is there one specific change that you're very happy about and you think helped you with your race? Um, I don't think necessary. And, and I, I have to, I, I know it's easier in some aspects, but the way they set up the legs now, everything is so tight. So from an actual like survival perspective, it's harder, I think, to stay because you don't have these one hour lead separating, um, the cushions a lot less. So if you make, you know, a few minor mistakes or one critical error like that, that's it. Um, especially with no non-elimination legs. Um, so yeah, I do think there, the challenges, there weren't as many challenges that offered opportunities to get ahead. It was, it almost felt like we pretty much for the most part maintained our standings, um, and self-navigating is hard in yeah. itself. I mean, I think, you know, 
it would be less ideal to have to sleep in an airport or outside on a street waiting for something to open. But I also think that could be like part of the fun of the race yes, too. Totally and it, different game. And it gives you more time to like talk with your castmates and like maybe strategize a little bit. So yeah. yeah. I've heard from past racers like that was the opportunity to like talk to locals and people who are in the airport to learn more about the location that you were in and you know, what are some of the historic sites? Like where, where should we be, you know, on the lookout for, can we find a map? I mean, that, I, I kind of missed out on that element of it. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, is there anything else that you want viewers to know about your race? Oh gosh. To know. Um, I didn't complain about my leg as much as <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And I was very frustrated with that too. So I think the misery. <laughs> she I did was, say, well, she's like, I just don't want to talk about my, my leg anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Every time we did our interviews, the producers always had to end with talking about the injury. And yeah. it was like, it makes old. sense. I know. It, I, mean, I know. I love you producers. Yeah. I love them. They're yeah. great. They had to tell the story, but I was as equally as frustrated as some of the fans. Yeah. <laughs> I do think, um, uh, there was a, a, a large part of this experience for me was um, honoring and celebrating my mother who had passed away right before the race. So there were some really beautiful moments. Um, like for instance, in Munich, that's a place she had visited. We landed on the mat. It was very emotional that we had, you know, just run our first leg. We made it through in top five. Um, and I was, you know, just thinking about my mom, I actually, I wear her, um, I wore her ring, um, her travel ring, the whole race. I would kiss it every time we got to the mat and it, Phil said, you know, we're standing here under an angel. And I had a picture of her on my backpack with angel wings, um, that she stood in front of in her last vacation in Portugal. Um, so there, there were a lot of beautiful moments, even in Iceland, um, we saw a butterfly that morning and it felt like she was there and she was going to help get us through and we made it. Um, so it was, it was really special. Um, I, I personally would love to have footage of that kind of stuff. Um, but not necessarily, I'm not disappointed. It wasn't on TV. I just, it, it was a big part of this experience yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. She was, she was there with us the whole oh, way. Yeah, we actually got lost in Germany, <laughs> ended up passing by um, quite a few of the sites that she and or, sorry, Molly's mom and dad had traveled to. So it was, yeah. it was a nice little reminder yeah. of them and of her. Um, yeah, 